<laughs> well, we're off to an exciting start here. It's not often that you bust into a place and immediately are met with a battle of sorts, so... Hey, Mr. Vampire. <laughs> it's time to whoop your ass. But yeah, so full disclosure, for this particular tower, I'm going to be using a map. And that's simply because this place is actually pretty convoluted and generally confusing. So when I streamed this part of the game, I was lost for at least an hour. And as much as I love being lost for hours at a time in games, as long as there's great music playing, of course, I just don't really want to replicate that here. So there are lots of great maps online and I'm using the one from uh, Fantasy Star Cave for the moment. And it seems to be really good. So thank you, Fantasy Star Cave, for posting such wonderful and detailed maps of these different areas. But yeah, so we're essentially on the quest in here for the Laconian Sword, which is the most powerful weapon in the game for Alice. And it's going to actually help to get her up to her maximum strength. And as obviously as we continue to level her up, her strength will continue to rise, but it's the most offensive power that she'll be able to have in the game. So that is buried deep within the depths of this place. And the other thing with this particular dungeon is that it's absolutely filled with pitfalls. Like, I cannot convey the amount of frustration that I had when I was playing this on stream, trying to maneuver through these hallways and actually trying to get somewhere and then falling through a pit and then having no idea where you are. So there's several different floors as well, so yeah, it's very hard to kind of keep everything straight. There's still another place beyond this one that's even worse. With respect to pitfalls, it's like every other hallway has a pitfall and it just gets to be really monotonous really quickly. But either way, a map is definitely helpful. So what we're going to do is continue, this is like one big square right now, so we're going to duck into the next left turn hallway and take a set of stairs that is just around the corner over here. There's lots of doors here too, which is also very disorienting. They really went all out to make this as disorienting as possible, that's for sure. So, you'll notice that the enemies in here are like, not too shabby, you know, like we can kind of handle them, so I think that this is a good part of the game to kind of dive in and really get these guys taken care of and get this item, especially. And then after this, I think it would be safe to say that we'd be ready to go to Dezoris and get some weapon upgrades for some of our other party members. So we haven't gone to Dezoris at all yet, but it's definitely a quest worth, worth going on. Even if just for the weapon upgrades. There's a whole bunch of places we still have to go and a whole bunch of things we still need to do. But we're probably definitely in the second half of the game. I'd say maybe even a little bit further than that. Cool. So, yeah, we just came up to this first staircase. Now we're on the second floor. And uh, actually, I think I want to go this way. First we're going to fight a Nessie. <laughs> I still find this such a funny thing, like when you find a Nessie, which is essentially like a giant serpent similar, in my humble opinion, to like the Loch Ness monster, but in the depths of a, a tower, rather than in an aquatic setting. It just makes me chuckle a little bit. Just a smidgen, of course. Oh good, we are continuing to level up. Super important stuff. Oh look! You must have seen me murdering your friend over here and wanted to come and, you know, seek revenge on us for that. I don't really blame you, green friend. I wish that we were fighting serpents, though, because the green would really, like, the green walls would contrast really well with the purple color of that particular enemy sprite. <laughs> but I was also told as a kid that purple and green should never be seen except for inside the washing machine, so what the hell do I know? I don't ask questions about fashion, to be honest. <laughs> I just kind of go with the flow. T-shirts and jeans are my best friends. But yeah, we haven't seen these Sphinx enemies in a little while either. I'm gonna go ahead and murder these guys. 
Alright, so we've murdered them real good. What do you got, my friend? More flashlights. <laughs> Holy jeez. Okay, so we are going into this next area. And we've gone up a couple of floors now. I think we're on the third level. Um, the reason why I'm not bothering to explore a lot of other areas in this dungeon is that it's mostly a big troll dungeon. And I say that in the sense that there are a lot of trapped chests or chests that have like one mesita or hamburgers in them, right? So we can buy those at a reasonable price without running the risk of having to wander aimlessly on many different floors and kind of little, little uh, different trajectories throughout this place. So I think it's pretty safe instead just to kind of go with the flow and get to the end as fast as possible. If the rest of the tower was worth exploring, I might say, okay, yeah, sure, fine, let's do that. But in my humble opinion, I don't feel like some of this stuff is worth it. Okay, so we want to take this turn. Uh, and this way. Oh, an andro cop. These guys never seem to let me run away from them. I've also got to heal up Odin at the first opportunity as well. They're usually pretty uh, difficult. Generally speaking, they have a very high offense depending on who they're attacking. <laughs> Seems I always neglect Odin. Poor guy. He really does not need an upgrade. Oh my god, he only has 5 HP. Holy crap, guys, we almost lost him. That's really sad. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Alright, let's heal him up, because that could have been a bad time. Here, we'll give you one more of those, because I think you're gonna need it. Alright, everybody else looks like they're still doing alright. So, yeah, we will continue on. I think we have maybe two more floors to go until we get to that last area where we can fight the good fight at the end and get our hands on one of those coveted weapons. It has been stated at some point by someone in this game that Lassic actually fears Laconia. And so getting the Laconian weapon and the Laconian armor and shield are all going to be really beneficial to helping us defeat him. So that's kind of what we're going for for the moment. But yeah, so we're racking up some nice cash and understandably this is a really big requirement because coming up we're going to have to make some pretty big purchases. We got some weapon upgrades to be worrying about. Um, what is this room? Let's see who's in here. If you plan to go back, now is the time to leave. How foreboding, sir, but thank you for the warning. Oh, hey. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to feel like the intensity of this situation is being built up a little bit, but it's always fun to kind of see a random guy on the third floor of a tower surrounded by monsters saying, Hey man, I live here. It's kind of terrible in here, so I highly recommend that you get the hell out as fast as possible. Or else you might be running into a little bit of trouble. And it's just some dude. <laughs> here we are, four warriors, and it's just this guy living his life. Oh man, so funny. Okay, so we are going to take a quick tiny detour because over here there is a burger to be had. So we're going to do that. I hope you guys don't find this obnoxious that I'm using a map, but I just didn't want to go through the pain of having to wander again. Hours and hours is not really my way of wanting to wander through these types of situations. Okay, so we are in one of the last stretches before we get to the end. And gosh, I hate these enemies. They're so difficult. I'm really hoping that he doesn't do that lightning attack where he affects all the members of our party. I've really got to be paying a little bit more attention to my party's HP as well. Because I notice everybody's getting quite low, so I should probably just take a second to heal everybody up before we run into trouble here. I don't know what it is with Odin's current situation, like why he's exceptionally susceptible 
two attacks for the time being. <laughs> Look at this, we fight like one of the hardest enemies and then we're back fighting owl bears again. Um, but sorry, as I was saying, I don't know why he's so susceptible to enemy attacks compared to other people. Like, it's not as if he's ill-equipped or we haven't done him any justice or like by passing over items that would help to kind of beef him up along the way. But he just generally seems to be a little bit weaker than other other members of the party. That'll all change though shortly. Oh god, I hate this. It'll all change shortly because we're actually able to equip him with a couple of the Laconian items, which is gonna really help to strengthen him. And it'll make him feel like a higher contributor to our party rather than just someone we're dragging along and worrying about all the time. Because I definitely do worry about him, <laughs> despite me seeming aloof and not particularly invested in his well-being, but it is what it is. So, yeah, we're in one of the final stretches here, just trying to get around. There's a super long hallway that we're into right now. Just trying to get around. We're on the uh, the fourth level. There's only five, so we're nearly there. But lots of conflict to run into along the way, I'm sure. I always find it scary. The closer you get to your goal in these places, the harder the fights become. But at least these marauders are being interspersed with owl bear fights. I can take that. I'm all right with that. I want to run away from you. Oh, good. That worked. <laughs> Jeez. I'm such a big wiener when it comes to this sort of thing. So, yeah, not too much, uh, not too much further till we get to those stairs. There's a couple of empty chests on this floor that I'm tempted to just not bother with. Because it just makes me mad when chests are empty. You know, you get all excited to see them and then <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you're not getting anything out of this. So there should be a couple of left turns coming up. Can I run from you? Oh, good. I kind of like when run works. Sometimes, though, you get stuck fighting these guys and you just don't want to, you know? You don't want to run into any, any troubles. I certainly don't feel like dying today. Alrighty. So... We can open it. It's empty, though sad face. It prompted me or else I wouldn't have bothered. But... Alright. So here's the last set of steps that we need to take up to the fifth level. I think. Yep, there she blows. Alright. So now we're gonna go through the dramatic opening of many doors and essentially we're just traveling in a spiral that's gonna get smaller and smaller as we go through these hallways. It's nice because there's not a lot of turns to kind of lead you astray and we're running the hell away from that dragon. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot of twists and turns. It's literally just straight hallways all the way to the end now and having enemy encounters along the way. Don't those dragon sprites just look phenomenal, though? Like, so intimidating, so beautifully done. Like, oh, the first time I saw a dragon in this game, I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. Like, there's no chance for me. The sprite work in this game has really, really made me realize how crappy some of the sprite work in other games is. You know, like, I think of games like Dragon Warrior, mind you, it's an older game compared to this one, of course, on a different console, but, you know, you look at the sprite work in some of that, some of those encounters, and you're just like, whoa, these are way nicer. <laughs> so, I don't know. I kind of like this game a lot, with all of its uh, intensity, and a lot of the artistic value is also pretty, pretty great. So, what do we want to do here? Um, I'm gonna just do a little bit of healing with Alice's magic because her magic's still pretty good. It does a job, but at a little bit of a lesser cost, I guess. 
Just because I don't want anybody to croak on me as we're getting up in the last leg of this place. And we always want to keep a little bit extra of her MP around as well, just in case we need it. Who knows, right? Maybe we want to talk to a dragon or something. Uh, I'm going to run away from this guy, <laughs> just because I really don't want to get beaten down so soon. Or so close to this end goal here. So we're continuing around here. We're almost there. Gosh, this feels like forever just going through these hallways. My goodness, they're really good at ramping up the intensity going into these fights, eh? It's like, oh, is this the last door? Which one's going to be the last one? Are we going to find our way? Who's behind the door? I think we have two more doors and then we're there. And the number of encounters that we've been running into here has dropped significantly, so I'm quite happy for that. I don't want to have to worry about healing up a million times. I really do adore the angry look that these skeletons give you, though. It's still the angriest skeletons I've ever met. I can say that much. Run away. Okay. A couple more turns and we should be at that final door. And then, at the last fight. Ooh. Oh, good. I ran away from him, too. This is good news. Ah, the last door before death will meet us. I'm just kidding. We're not gonna meet death. We're gonna kick some ass. Alright. Hello, red dragon. So we're gonna attack, and then with Noah, I wanna cast Protect. Because Protect can definitely protect the party from some of that, um, some of that fire magic that this dragon is definitely gonna be spewing. So that's nice. So the magic wall will deflect the red dragon's attack, and that's kind of what we want to do. We really don't want to see anybody get roasted. <laughs> Pardon the pun. But yeah, if we get our party getting hit too often, we're going to have a bad time. I'm going to cast Wind on him as well. That's a really nice offensive attack that Noah has. And it is actually really positive. These dialogue boxes and these battles go by so quickly though, so sometimes it's hard to miss when the magic wall will actually go away, because sometimes it just goes away randomly. So it's nice to just be able to uh, keep your eyes peeled on this and make sure that you're really paying attention, because you don't want that wall to go away and then get destroyed. There, it just disappeared, and it came and went in a flash, so good thing I was paying attention. I think we'll be okay. I'm not going to cast it again. There we go. So the red dragon is killed. We gain 65 experience points. There's a treasure chest. Of course we'll open it. There are 193 mesitas, and we found the Laconian sword. Awesome. The other thing I'll warn you guys about is that if you accidentally use Noah's telepathy spell and talk to the dragon, you never get the Laconian sword, just so you know. It is something that you probably don't really want to do. Uh, and we're going to have to drop something. Because we can't carry that Laconian sword. Holy jeez. Could you imagine? We will drop one of these 9,000 flashlights, please and thanks. Awesome. Alright, so now we have a nice skeleton fight. It's always nice to end a dragon fight with fighting a bunch of skeletons. Could you imagine in real life if that was the case? So funny, but not funny at all, really. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so we're gonna fight these guys, and then I'm gonna warp out of here. So how about I do that, and I'll see you guys back outside the tower. Alright, so we have officially escaped the tower, and now we have a whole bunch of other stuff to do, like tracking down the rest of the Laconian items, as well as some other items that we're going to need in order to be able to finish the game. So let's kind of get back to land and see where we need to go from there. Okay, so we are currently in the Forgotten Tower, and this is the door that leads to the fight with the Red Dragon for the Laconian Sword. 
And what I actually want to show you guys is that you can actually entirely miss the Laconian Sword if you engage in this fight and don't actually fight the dragon, but instead use Noah's telepathy here to talk to him and not get the item. So the red dragon answers. It says the vehicle known as the Ice Digger lives up to its name. And off it goes, and look at that, no chest, no nothing. So you can actually entirely miss that weapon, which is Alice's strongest weapon in the game. So whatever you do, <laughs> do not talk to the dragon, or else you will be in some kind of trouble, and it won't be very fun for you, that's for sure.